nitrogen lockup, nitrogen tie-up, nitrogen deficiency, whatever you want to call it, that is a hotly debated topic and there's still a lot of confusion around what nitrogen tie-up is. So today I'm in the forest. I'm turning to nature to give you some context, to give you some information, to give you some guidelines as to how nitrogen tie-up works. What are the, some of the things that you need to look at within the natural world to inspire you to get the answers you need? To not just be taking in information people are saying, that get them views, clicks, all of those things. I want to give you information that is relevant, truthful, and honest. So join me as I sit in the forest and we have a talk about nitrogen tie-up. I'm not in the garden today. That's because all of my inspiration for everything I do in the garden and on the homestead is based on what nature has to offer. And we all know, if you don't work with nature, you're working against it. And guess what? That is a battle you are going to lose. So let's be inspired by nature. Sit down, enjoy the chat. If you enjoy this video, please click the thanks button down below. Any contribution will greatly help the channel. Buy me a cup of coffee if you want to. I've put the link in the description. Please also subscribe because there's a lot more that's in store for this journey that you're gonna be able to continue to learn about, evolve your gardening career and create a beautiful community together. I'm sitting on a log in the forest, surrounded by pine needles, fallen leaves, carbon rich material. At the same time, I am surrounded by lush greenery that is needing nitrogen to grow. How can that be? How can I be completely surrounded by carbon rich material and have abundantly growing greenery at the same time when there is all this talk about nitrogen lockup nitrogen tie-up, nitrogen deficiency caused by a carbon imbalance. And that's what I want to talk to you about today. I want you to have a better understanding of how a piece of bark like this can or cannot cause nitrogen deficiency in your soil. What is the driving force behind this? Well, I recently did a video on grubs and it was quite a popular video and there were quite a few comments around would adding in bark chips into the soil, which grubs absolutely love, and they will break big pieces of bark like this up into small little pieces and release nutrients back in the soil, the earthworms will actually eat the grub castings and create earth earthworm castings, which are even more nutritious. I got a few comments asking me, will adding bark chips or wood chips into the soil in the pot not cause nitrogen lockup, nitrogen tie-up, or nitrogen deficiency? And those are really good questions. So I wanted to come back into nature today to talk about that concept a little bit more, because in essence, what we need to do is we need to look at what the natural world does to create balance, to thrive, to have a self-sustaining ecosystem where humans just don't function and have zero input. So to be able to do that, what I'm going to do to make things easy is I'm going to break it up into two parts. The first part is above soil, above ground, and then we're going to look at below ground. That's going to be the easiest. Now, the most simple start to this is above ground. Now, if we look at what happens above ground, leaves fall in the autumn and they then start breaking down and all those nutrients are then released back into the underground layer of the soil. What happens is over time in the natural environment, there is a layer called a leaf mulch layer. You also commonly have heard of leaf mulch compost, anything like that. And that's what we want to ultimately imitate in our garden environments by mulching, composting, adding layers on top, because over time, 
the, the idea and the concept is to mimic nature where microbes and worms come up and they eat those and release nutrients, break down organic matter, release them back into the soil and then continue that cycle. That is exactly why no dig has become so popular. Because what you want to do is continue to build that soil structure over time, mimic the natural environments where everything is so balanced, everything is so nutrient rich and nutrient dense. And by tilling the soil, you're flipping everything everything upside down, you are completely altering the soil structure, and you're also exposing microbes and worms to everything they shouldn't be, and a lot of the microbes end up dying. So what happens is all of these carbon rich materials fall to the ground and they get broken down. Now if we look at a pine needle, a pine needle is very very small. It has then a very large surface area. If you compare it to something like this which has two sides and a very very small side on the back, this has got I mean, it's a big surface area, but it's relatively small in comparison to the same equivalent of pine needles. And this is very important to understand. And it comes down to the type of mulching that you are using. Mulching on its own is not going to cause nitrogen deficiency in any way. What it is going to do, like it does in nature, is the top two centimeters, it's a very, very small layer of your soil is going to have some form of nitrogen deficiency but i'm talking minuscule amounts if we look at the size of a microbe a microbe needs nitrogen to break down carbon but that nitrogen is so small in comparison to what the actual microbe is that is needed and when that microbe breaks down the carbon material it releases nutrients and nitrogen and when that microbe dies, it releases the nitrogen it originally consumed and is held within its body, plus the nitrogen that forms its exoskeleton and its actual body structure back into the soil. So the temporary reduction in nitrogen ends up in a three, four, five-fold release of nitrogen back into the soil. And this is holding a lot of gardeners and people back from success in the garden. They have this deep-rooted fear of nitrogen lockup, nitrogen tie-up, nitrogen deficiency, that either, that either they overfeed their plants and they get an abundance of growth long into nodes and they don't get fruit and food, or the opposite applies, they don't do that and they have weaker soil structure, weaker nutrient makeups, and they need to give them fertilizers and things like that. Mulching is a very powerful way to increase your soil structure and release nutrients. But you want to do it carefully, you want to do it considerately. What I like doing is using something like fallen leaves. I do use pine needles because FYI, pine needles don't alter pH in the soil, but that's another debate for another time. I will use that as a mulch layer. Then the next season, I won't remove that mulch layer because it's done all of its work. It would have broken down quite substantially. I'll add compost on top of that. Now what's happening is that that layer is now creating the, car the nitrogen environment to break down the carbon layer and you're putting some compost on top, which has nitrogen, that's going down and it's speed speeding up the composition, the decomposition rather, process of the previous mulch. Adding the new mulch on top, you have your compost, that then feed gives nitrogen to the top and you're not altering the root layer of the soil in any way when it comes to adding in your, your mulch or your carbon layer. So from the above ground structure, forget about nitrogen deficiency, nitrogen lockup. Just be smart, mulch carefully, mulch sensibly, don't dig it in at this stage. But that is a good segue into part two which is let's have a look at below ground to look at what happens below ground this is a fallen over pine tree and its huge rich root structure is exposed it gives us a good insight into what the soil structure looks like and there's probably a good 30 40 centimeters of dark rich soil 
and then we go into claim. So let's talk a bit about underground. And this is where there's a lot of debate amongst the gardening community, scientific community, and there's been a lot of research and studies. But once again, I'm looking to nature. So this is not a scientific approach. This is not a researched approach. It's just a observing approach. If we look at a tree that has fallen, initially it's fallen flat and the whole surface of that tree is then on top of the, the soil. Now a pine tree is going to take a long time to completely break down and become part of the soil structure. Many, many, many years. Now what's going to happen is over time every leaf fall is going to cover up the log a bit more. And I'm sure you've been to forests where half, if three, not three quarters of that log is completely covered underneath with leaf mulch and it's breaking down beautifully. It's also that it's completely surrounded by plant. That adjustment of a whole bunch of carbon rich material under the ground has not altered the nitrogen in the soil. But the flip side is in nature, you never see lots of carbon rich materials being dug into or worked into the soil. The, the good example that one can look at is pastures. If we look at cows, cow manure, things like that, um, grass that is trampled, that is then compressed into the soil and then you can get layers on top of it. But that's not what I want to focus on. If we look at a forest environment, which is the healthiest, most sustained, most sustained, self-sustaining environment, there's never really in scenarios where an abundance of carbon-rich material is dug into the soil. But there are also perfectly good examples of instances where there is inclusion of carbon-rich materials into the soil. That's from animals scratching, baboons digging, squirrels digging, mixing up the soil. So it happens all the time. And it's all about balance and how much you are putting in. So if you are doing a half-half ratio of carbon mixture to compost in your pots or your beds, yes, you're probably going to have an initial problem of all of that carbon-rich material, whether it's wood chips, wood bark, stuff like that, taking some of the nutrients from the soil. And just remember, it's not the bark or the carbon that is taking and withdrawing the nutrients from the soil. It's the microbes that are needing that nitrogen and those nutrients as fuel and energy to break down the carbon. Just remember that. So there, yes, there might be an initial deficiency and one might need to for one season, if you do that, give some additional nitrogen or fertilizer to your beds. But what that's going to be doing in the long run is it's going to be creating a natural soil structure that is naturally aerated, naturally water retentive, um, naturally loamy. Because what a lot of people do is they add in artificial things like perlite, vermiculite, peat moss, all types of moss, all types of additives to increase the soil structure, to increase aeration, to increase drainage, to increase airflow, all of these things. When all you can do is just take natural things like mulch, leaves, wood chips, pine bark, wood bark, anything like that. Mix it into your soil initially when you create your bed for the first time and pots is different because you continuously build on pots and let that sit. By the time a bark nugget has broken down, that soil structure has become so good that you wouldn't need to ever amend it again. If you just fill your bed with a whole bunch of compost. Please watch that video of mine on grubs because you're going to have more issues having a perfectly compost filled bed than a bed that is initially going to have a little bit of nitrogen deficiency or some other mineral deficiency, but that is set up for the future. And it's absolutely bucketing now. So if you see me getting 
wetter and wetter over time. It's just because I'm in the forest and it's pouring with rain and it's absolutely beautiful. So, what is a really, really good real world example of this whole concept in play? Hugel culture. So, if you've ever heard of Hugel culture beds, it is exactly this principle. And how many people have you heard saying, Hugel culture beds are the worst thing that have ever been created because they rob the soil of nitrogen and they cause nitrogen lockup? No. They are one of the most productive, long-term self-sustaining beds you can create. Why? Because you fill the bottom up with logs and a whole bunch of broken branches, leaves, organic material, and you make a big mound of just carbon. Then you add your layers on top with nitrogen-rich compost, da 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 and you make a nice bed, and you plant into that. The roots start breaking things down. The whole soil structure starts coming into play. Why is that one of the most successful planting methods, but at the same time we're complaining about nitrogen lockup, nitrogen tie-up in soil because of carbon? And it all comes down to the modern human's need for instant gratification. That is our problem. We don't want to put in the work now to harvest the rewards next year or the year after. We want to put our work in now to get the rewards now. And that's the problem. Is people do things and like mixing in carbon-rich materials into the soil initially. They want to plant immediately and they want the best harvest they've ever had. That is the problem. As soon as you take a step back and you say, what I'm going to do is I'm going to invest into my soil and I'm going to accept what comes from it for the first one, two, up to three years because I know that after that period, I'm going to get the best harvest I've ever got. So when you first create your beds, make sure there's a lot of carbon material in there. Make sure that you are feeding grubs, that if there isn't carbon-rich material, they are going to turn to the roots of your plants for food. Grubs, you're never going to get rid of them. They are beetles that are flying around. They're the larva of beetles. They're very, very good for the soil. You're never going to get rid of them. So why work against nature by removing carbon from the soil and then having other issues? So... I suppose the long and short of it is, yes, nitrogen lockup, nitrogen tie-up, nitrogen deficiency is a very scientific thing that involves soil science and things like that. But it need not be. It just needs perspective. It needs some clear thinking. And it needs a real good look at nature itself. Just remember, we are dealing with two concepts, above ground and below ground. You need to decide at which stage your garden is in and then decide which one you are embarking on. So if you have an established garden, you don't want to be digging in mounds of um, organic matter and carbon-rich materials into your existing soil structure because then you're going to probably do more damage and set your soil back that you've been working so good on, so much more, that you've been working so hard on. There you would look at the mulching technique of mulch, compost, mulch, compost, mulch, and that'll, over time, keep feeding into your soil and keep nu adding nutrients to it. If you are starting out a new garden, the other side would apply where you'd focus on the below soil structure and not so much the mulching structure initially. There you're going to allow your soil to, for the first couple of seasons, do what it needs to. If there's a bit of deficiency, it's okay. You're going to then feed it, give it some extra things, but you are then setting that bed up for long-term success. Then you want to add in wood, barks, bark chips, broken branches, leaves, all of that, mix it in with your compost, um, and then add a layer of mulch onto that to keep the whole environment cool, moist, all of that. So you're probably going to have questions and I would love to hear your questions. And if you disagree with anything I've said, that is awesome. Please drop it in a comment below. If you have disagreements or you think I've covered it completely wrong, let me know. I'd love to hear your opinion. 
We can even make another video on disagreements that we can open up a, a really nice, healthy debate on the topic. But if you have enjoyed this video, if you've got value out of it, please consider subscribing by clicking the little subscribe button wherever it is on the screen. Click the thanks button to say thanks for the effort that goes into these videos. Buy me a coffee and just like and share this video so we can share the knowledge and the logical thinking around nitrogen lockup, nitrogen tie-up, nitrogen deficiency caused by carbon-rich materials so we can get rid of all the ifs and buts and assumptions that are being made and just think clearly about how nature works and how the soil works. Till next time, happy growing.